Good morning. My name is Karen Kong and I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada and welcome to my This or That Thursday. So every week I try to post two cards in my Facebook group and I ask my crafting community, that's all of you guys, to pick a card for me to make live on Thursday mornings around 9 a.m. I'm running a few minutes late today. Sorry about that. I ran into technical difficulties with launching. And then I also realized that um, I don't actually have the card that we're going to make. <laughs> so I gave it away already. I gave it away just this past week. But um, so I made it and I gave it away. But I have the other I have the original um, the other card that I made, which is this one. And I actually, because I did say, say, I don't know what's wrong with my, my tongue, not enough coffee, obviously. Um, I did say that I uh, went crazy with this particular layout. I really loved it and I used it to make another card. So this is the other card I also made just for an example. Um, but I am giving that one away tonight, actually. So hopefully the person who's going to receive it isn't actually watching. <laughs> because <laughs> it won't be a surprise otherwise um, anyways so yes I don't actually have the card that we are making it's the floral one that um, that uh, got voted uh, for me to make today so um, I will use the other ones as a guide good morning Sandra thanks for joining in um, so yeah I don't have that floral one I gave it away so um, I do have all the pieces. We're going to go ahead and make it. I just don't have a sample to show you, but I did um, bring the other two. So you can uh, enjoy the pictures of the all the cards that I made after, um, after the video is done and after I post everything. So I'll give you several examples. I think it's such a versatile... Um, layout that I used it with three different DSPs and sets and it worked so well with them. It is so easy and fast to make like faster than I would have expected for me because I'm usually really slow at um, picking the colors and choosing, you know, uh, what image to use. This layout made it so much easier. So let's get started. Um, let me just get the uh, get my computer up and running so that I can see your comments while we're crafting. If you are joining in live, um, please do say hi. Please um, ask me questions because uh, it's no fun talking to myself. I suck at talking to myself. <laughs> um, okay, I'm just going to get my computer up and running and now I can see all the comments. Okay, so let's move to my desktop. I'm just going to move the camera. Close your eyes if, uh, if you're watching so that um, you don't make yourself dizzy. Just a second. There we go. There's my desktop. Okay. Um, I wish that the, I don't know what it is. Every single week it seems like Facebook moves, or maybe it's my camera, I don't know. Maybe it uses a different camera each time, but uh, I never feel like it's centered. Well, okay, that looks okay. All right, so here we go. So here's the other card that I made, and I'm not going to fussy cut today, Sandra. You can rest assured I am not going to do any of that. <laughs> um, but I did use the Nests of Winter because I, I thought of this, and I was like, Oh, that paper is going to work like this paper in the background. I think it works really well as the matting layer um, for this design. And it's just so easy to pick out colors because you just pick from whatever's in the DSP and use that. And really, it, it narrows your choices and doesn't make you so confused. I don't know about you, but there's just so many colors sometimes. I don't know what to put together. And using the DSP just makes it so much easier. So... Um, so I pulled the crumb cake and the garden green and the knight of navy from the cardstock, the, sorry, the DSP. And then I used the uh, Joyful Sayings ephemera pack, which is also using the garden green. So it was perfect. It just, this is not even a Christmas card. It's like a winter thinking of you card, right? So um, very versatile. Okay, so here's another layout using the... the um, Sorry, another card using the same layout, and I use the Retired Rings of Love um, set. So um, 
I stamped the house and I used the Rings of Love DS, uh, the um, dies to cut out a little um, log piece and um, and then this is this DSP is from the Rings of Love DSP sorry if this is not the right exact name but it's retired so you know you can use this with any stamp set any DSP that you have I'm sure you can make it work it's so easy to do so let's get started I'm going to use the zinnias for this and um, and we'll you will make that card with that layout okay so let me clear a little bit of space I pulled out all the pieces I need and I pulled out like um, scraps of paper that I could use for cutting etc I already have a half sheet of uh, Blackberry Bliss so I don't need to cut that but I do need to score it and I need to uh, make a mat all right so let's make a little bit of room for my paper cutter and let's score this so that it's nice and easy to fold and it makes a nice crisp fold I'm measuring it four and a quarter and scoring it and I'm just going to fold it in half okay and then we'll set this aside and then I have a matting layer so let's bring in the example here okay so I have a matting layer here in a corresponding like a uh, color a coordinating color sorry um, so I picked uh, out of the um, zinnias DSP the old olive actually I wonder if that's a uh, actually a, one of the colors in the DSP I can't remember because sometimes you can use similar colors that are close enough that you don't actually have to match everything and it looks great still so old olive is one of the colors though um, so this mat um, is three and a quarter three and three quarters by five inches now if this is the first time you're joining in I do always provide the measurements in my video description after I'm done so don't worry about writing it all down I I will give it to you later okay three and three quarters by five so I'm gonna cut three and three quarters this way and then five inches this way okay so that's my matting layer for behind my DSP so the DSP is uh, three and a half by four and three quarters so I'm going to take this piece here and um, let's take oh, I'm going to cut this three and a half let's do three and a half this way this was a piece that I'd started um, fussy cutting flowers out of so that's three and a half by four and three quarters there we go all right so this weekend is actually Thanksgiving here in Ottawa and um, we don't have anything special planned I was uh, asked to go to Toronto to see my family but um, it's my son's first year in uh, university and he's so bogged down with um, tests and assignments that are due next week that he doesn't even want to come home for the night I'm so sad <laughs> Um, so, but he has reading week the week after, so I'm, I'm hopeful that he's going to come home then. Um, okay, so let me grab my cut and emboss machine. And I'm going to grab the little guy, because I think all of my dies will fit on this one. Okay, so I'm just going to remind myself I need one and twos, and I don't need this gray one. So I'm just using the instructions right on the cutting plate. If uh, you ever forget, you just look there. Okay, so I'm going to die cut a square, the largest square in white. Okay, so the basic um, color scheme is the last one is always white for me. 
and that just works from my color scheme. So I'm going to color, get cut the uh, the white in the largest square from the stylish shapes dies, and then I'll use the second largest one to cut the next two colors. So I chose crumb cake and navy for this one, but for my zinnias card, I'm going to use. Um, Blackberry Bliss, and I decided not to use a. Uh, I decided not to use a solid cardstock for that one. I actually decided to use a um, DSP instead because I thought it um, gave more contrast that way. So um, that's what I'm going to do instead. Ooh, this fits just exactly. Let's see how this goes through because it's usually when I put a um, square or something with a straight edge through my die cutter, I like to angle it because when it goes through straight, it really makes a loud banging sound. So um, we'll see how this goes. So yeah, so like I said, it's Thanksgiving this weekend. We don't have big plans. Does anybody else have any plans for the weekend? I'm just... Uh, Looking forward to a little bit of quiet time, I guess, and uh, hopefully um, getting to see my son for a while. He's going to come home for, he has to work on Sunday morning for a few hours, and then um, and then he's going to come here to hang out for the afternoon and have dinner with us, but then he's going straight back to residence and hanging out there to study, he says. So I'm kind of sad I won't see him very much, but it's better than nothing. I'm, I'm glad that he's at least close by um, so he can uh, easily come home for both Thanksgiving and Reading Week. Okay, so I'm cutting one in the second largest square in the Blackberry Bliss and then I'll cut one in the DSP. So that's different from my other layouts where I'll just quickly show you. I You can use just solid DSP uh, uh, cardstocks but I'm using a DSP for the, the uh, top one for, the, uh, for this card. Oh, Sandra says she's gonna do, yes, practice, practicing for driving tests. Yes, I will probably try and squeeze that in if I can um, after his shift at work, at least a short one, but during his reading week is when I'm gonna do most of his practicing because his uh, test is coming up. Okay, one more um, piece of DSP for cutting the second square. So this one's a little bit wide. I'm just going to cut it down a little bit so that it can fit through without squashing the paper. I'm off screen, I know. I'm just going to cut the, uh, the paper a little bit skinnier. I'm bringing it back. Okay, so here it's skinnier and now it'll fit nicely through my cotton emboss. All right. So let's cut this. So if you don't have these dies, you can do the exact same thing with just squares and still achieve, you know, a beautiful layout. Um, you don't have to have these dies to use this layout at all. All right, so there. Okay, so that's all the matting pieces. So I have my three squares and I have my matting layer. I now need the um, the flowers. So let's die cut the flowers. I have one. I have a three. I have three layers of my flowers. So one is uh, melon mambo, one is fresh freesia, and one is blackberry bliss. So let me just grab my dies. So we'll die cut this one in Frisia. Actually, if I cut this down, or I'll move this down, and then we can fit this guy over here. There we go. And uh, is Sandra, are you serving turkey or ham, or what's what's your usual Thanksgiving meal, or do you not 
do the traditional Thanksgiving meal. I don't ever do turkey. I leave that for my sister when she's cooking for us. But I mean, I don't have a lot of turkey lovers in this household. And for me to cook a turkey and just for four of us would be... Well, we've been eating turkey for a long time, and I don't know if everybody would be very happy about that. <laughs> so um, we are having ham. Not a huge favorite either, but I can use the ham afterwards. I always use it to make um, mac and cheese. That's what I do with the leftover ham. So how big of a turkey do you use? Because like you guys don't have, like you don't host a big gathering or anything. So whatever turkey's left over, it's for you guys, right? Um, oh, butternut squash soup. That sounds yummy. Okay, so I have my three flowers. I just need, oh, I need some leaves. So let's get out the leaf die. I'll put these back before I lose them. So there's a leaf here and I need to stamp a leaf. So let's get that out as well. Okay. I'm gonna put the uh, leaf stamp on a block. And um, I need two leaves. One is in uh, Mossy Meadow, and I'll have to die cut a second time with the same die. 12 pound turkey, yeah, that'll still last you quite some time afterwards. But if you guys love turkey, then that's not a really big deal. I just don't have like huge turkey lovers or chicken lovers in my household. I'm sure I'd use it up eventually. But uh, yeah, maybe next year, I don't know, maybe next year I'll attempt a turkey, but I know that um, my sister achieves fantastic results by brining, and I don't know where I would find the room to brine a turkey and have all the fixings for the rest of a turkey dinner. <laughs> where would I find the room? I'd, I'd pretty much have to empty the whole fridge. Like I'm assuming when you brine a turkey, it has to go in the fridge. It doesn't just sit out, so. Yeah, I would have to empty the entire fridge. I see lots of ideas from Sandra on how to use the turkey. I'm sure I could. I, You know what? I probably could. I just always um, avoided cooking turkey. But I should try it one year. I'll surprise everybody. Okay, so there's my two leaves. Um, what else do I need? I need, um, let's see. I'm just thinking about all the cut and embossing I need to do. So I need the center of this flower. Um, so there's two little pieces in the center of the, the zinnia. It's uh, daffodil, I think, and I think I used calypso coral or some kind of an orange. And I'm just wondering, I should have gotten that out and I'm not sure where I have any extra pieces. Just let me check if I have a little bit. Okay, so Sandra, does the brining turkey have to go in the fridge? It does, right? Okay, so I have a little piece of the, uh, I don't know if that's Calypso Coral or what did I, yes, I'm pretty sure that's Calypso Coral. It's, it's another color from the DSP. And I need a daffodil. Just a second while I grab that. Here's another scrap. It's sometimes annoying having to save little pieces of scrap, but then when you need that tiny little piece and you don't want to cut up a whole new piece, that's when it's like, you know, such a fantastic thing that you don't have to cut it up again. Okay, so there's my little guy there, and here's the other piece, and uh, it goes right there. Oh yeah, okay. 
Yes, those of you who have extra fridges, so lucky. I don't have an extra fridge. I have an extra freezer, but not a fridge. So, I definitely could use an extra fridge some days. All right, so there's my little middle pieces. Let's pull these off. And I'm just gonna put those away before I lose it. Okay, I think, oh, I have some stamping to do and then I have to cut it, cut and emboss it. Sorry, die cut it. Okay, so let's put that away to the side. I'm just gonna grab my old olive. Oh, you know what? I think I was gonna be able to fit it on here, yes. And we'll stamp that, so. Let me just find my old olive. Okay, so let's stamp this. Looks good. You know what? I have been using my Stamparatus very little lately. I'm, I don't know what to make of it. I mean, I love my Stamparatus, but I guess I'm just getting more used to just stamping freehand. Um, okay, stamping's done. I just need to die cut this and then we'll go on to assemble everything and I'll show you how easy it is. Okay. Let me get this die here. And I'm lining it up. All right. Okay, I lost track of where that comment came from, Sandra. You said you I could use something for Christmas cards, but I don't remember what I said. <laughs> we'll use what for Christmas cards? Um, I could probably use this for, actually, you know what? This would be a really great way to use up a whole bunch of my DSPs. Oh, the Stamparatus, yes, absolutely, for multi multiples. I will use it for Christmas cards, for sure. Um, I think I almost missed using my Stamparatus. Um, okay, but actually I'm thinking, it, I'm thinking maybe this would be a fantastic way to make like my multiples of Christmas cards because this would make beautiful Christmas cards, this layout. All right, so here we are. We're ready for assembly, I believe. Let's put all of these pieces away. Oh, I'll stamp, I'll do this final stamping of the sentiment afterwards. Um, okay, so the first part is really easy. You're just basically going to center and adhere the, um, the two biggest matting pieces. So this one first. Oh, I think I'm running low on glue. So, um, as I've said before, I don't put glue too close to the edge, so I have some wiggle room in, in case I place it in the wrong spot. Um, I can move it over without glue uh, appearing on my cardstock. And I like to put it down at an angle. So I'm holding it like this, up on an angle, and I just line up the sides and the bottom and the top and make sure that it's as centered as I can and as I lay this down I'm looking to make sure that the right side is centered as well and I kind of nudge it over if I think it's not centered and that's how I center those okay so now I'm going to take my DSP and we'll do the exact same thing So 
again. I'm just centering this before I place it down. And when you use glue, you have time to wiggle things a bit. There. Okay, now that's the easy part. Actually, the whole thing is easy, not to give you any kind of ideas that anything is hard here. It's really easy, okay? So I have one large square. I have two smaller squares that are the exact same size. My Blackberry Bliss is going to be the background, and I'm going to split it right across the middle in half. So let me bring back my paper trimmer. And I'm just going to line up my corners with the groove, the cutting groove. Okay. So I'm going to move my fingers out of the way so I can hold it in place while I lay it down the, uh, the arm. Okay. And I will just slice it right across the middle. So there I've halved these across the diagonal. And I'm going to adhere it to the corners of my larger square. Now you got to make sure that you place it closer, close enough to the edges that when you place your middle square, your second square, sorry, your second small square to be more accurate, um, on top that it doesn't cover it up, right? I made this mistake yesterday. <laughs> I put it too close, these two pieces too close to the middle, and when I went to put this on top, it pretty much covered it, so I had to pull the pieces off. So just make sure that you don't put them too close to the middle. Make sure you put it closer to the side, okay? So let me just put some glue on, and we'll adhere those. Oops. Okay, so I'm just lining this up, and I like using my tweezers to get my fingers out of the way when it's a smaller piece and the glue is closer to the edge. So I only turned the heat on in our house like two days ago or something, which is ridiculous. In October, I mean... Normally, we would have already had the heat on already ages ago, but this year it was just so warm. Like, I had the air conditioning still on last week when the temperatures were still getting quite high in the daytimes. All right, so now that I've adhered those two pieces on the edges, when I put this on top, they'll make a nice border for my DSP. And it looks really, really great. Um, I choose to glue it down flat. There will be, you know, you can experiment with this and use dimensionals to raise this piece. Um, but I, I choose to glue it down flat because I raised up my, uh, my flower on top. There we go. There. All right. Now I'm not wrapping any string or ribbon around this, so I'm going to go ahead and adhere this um, on the top part of my card. And again, like you can play with this. You could you could raise it up on dimensionals. Um, or, but, I, but I know that my flower is going to um, be 3D enough, so I don't want to add additional height because I don't, I don't know how it would survive if I sent it through the mail. Oops. 
it just kind of stuck to my finger there and kind of nudged over when I let go. So there we go. Perfect. All right. So let's take our flowers and um, adhere them together. So I'm going to make this one the back. So I just kind of, um, when I'm working with the zinnias, when I go to adhere it, I don't want too many of the petals overlapping because then you can't see all the color. I think that that way works the best. So I always lay it out beforehand before I uh, go glue it down so I have an idea of where it's going to go. I only put glue in the middle. That's all you need to hold it. I have it like this. See, I just had it a second ago. There we go. No? See, reality crafting. You think you're prepared, but... Okay, I'm going to go with it like this. There's no real right or wrong. It's just I wanted to be able to see as much of the petals as possible. Okay, and then this one's going to go on top. So let's see how I can align this one. So that as much of the petals can be seen underneath. I don't know if there's going to be a good way because there's like, then I'm covering up the, uh, how did I do this? Maybe like this? Yeah, okay. We'll go with that. All right. Yes, I could, I guess. A brad? Would that, I mean, would I, I would have to punch a hole in order to use a brad, I guess. I haven't used brads in forever. I've got a whole bunch of cute ones for scrapbooking from Disney with little Mickey Mouse shapes and stuff, but again, I have not done anything with scrapbooking in so long. Okay, I'm covering up all my Blackberry Bliss like this. I don't know how I can best, well, let's just go like that. All right. Um, all right, so then we'll just put these last two pieces on and our flower will be done. And I'm only putting the glue dots like right closest to the center of this piece because I know that the outer edges will not actually be touching much. Um, do you see how it lines up? So I really just only need glue along the inside edge. There we go. All right. Um, okay, so. The next thing I'm going to do is to give it a more 3D look, and you don't have to do this, but I just think it looks nice, is I'm going to just take my finger and I'm just going to kind of rub it in an upward, upward angle um, along each little petal. Ha! <laughs> Sandra says to organize a scrapbooking gather, get together. Okay, do you remember what the problem was with scrapbooking was for me, Sandra? <laughs> it's, I am so slow. Okay, I'm slow at making cards as it is. And cards are small, right? So there's not a lot of planning required. And I don't have to do um, anything like too involved. For scrapbooking, however, when I need to print photos. That means I have to go through the photos. I have to decide which ones I think I might use. <laughs> oh my gosh. And then get them printed and um, think about the layouts I'm going to use and have all the papers ready. I don't know how I ever did that. I, I think I spent more time just sitting and thinking about my layouts all the time. And that's why I never got anything done. I don't know how you, you and um, our other friend got so much done all the time. How did you do that? Like without pre-planning like the layouts, but it's, and like, you know, trying to coordinate the colors and, um, you know, all that. So yeah, 
Scrapbooking for me is a very time-consuming endeavor. I, I do much better with food, um, with digital scrapbooking because then everything is at my fingertips, right? And I can coordinate the colors much easier. Um, yeah, I've had much greater success with digital scrapbooking, which logically means I should really just get rid of all my my uh, physical scrapbooking um, books. <laughs> I have empty books sitting on my shelves. Okay, so um, I am going to put dimensionals just in the center here, and that will allow me to slide my uh, my pieces of my leaves underneath the petals. I don't want to block block the leaves from getting uh, adhered. So I'm just going to put one. Dimensional. <laughs> Sandra saying she cared less and less about layouts. Yeah, I think it's gonna have to come to that. It's all about getting, getting the pictures in, and um, the journaling. I mean, I think journaling is probably um, an important thing so that you actually remember what was going on, right? What what that was about. Okay, so I want to put this one, I'm just thinking out loud here, I think I want this one on top. So I'm just going to stick a little bit of glue and then I'll slide it in. Yeah, I think, you know, with scrapbooking, I mean, the important thing is to preserve the memory, um, hopefully journal something that is valuable to remember. Um, and not lose those uh, moments, right? So here, I'm just gonna stick some glue over here. And I'm avoiding these lines, but it's gonna be hidden underneath the uh, petals, but if they weren't, then it would squish out through the, uh, the die cut lines. So I just avoid those. Okay, so I'm gonna put that underneath. I'm just sliding it in. And do the same thing with the last set of leaves. I'll make scrapbooking maybe a goal once my kids are out of the house and I'll give it to them like, I don't know, when they get married or something or buy a new house or and they have their own place to store all of that stuff. All right, so that is the majority of the card. Um, I'm going to get some jewels to uh, embellish it, and I have to stamp the sentiment. So I use the one from the Zinnia's stamp set. Um, I only use this part. So then it could be sending flowers for any reason. It can be for birthday, for congratulations, for sympathy even, right? So I'm just going to use this part of my stamp. Okay. I'm going to need um, a longer lock. Let me just grab something. There we go. All right. And Blackberry Bliss. Okay. And I'm just going to ink up, I'm going to ink up just the sending flowers. Okay, and I'm going to take my chamois and just wipe off any excess on the next letters. Okay. Actually, I'm going to 
stamp it right here. So let's line this up. That looks great. Blackberry Bliss always stamps nicely, I find. There are certain colors, I think, that stamp better than others. I don't know why that is, um, but Blackberry Bliss is one of them. Okay, so I'm going to use my trimmer to chop this down to size. I'm just going to cut right at the edge here. I don't need it to be to have too much extra. And then I'm just going to flag the ends using my scissors. Uh, oh, you know what? I need to cut it this way. There's too much on the bottom. Too much white. And that's what I love about this trimmer is that I can cut small pieces of paper like this and it will hold it nicely for me. I'm just going to use my bone folder to flatten all the edges because I find it gets a little bit of a raised lip. Alright, so this one, um, let's see. I'm just making a center mark and then cutting to the center. That's how you flag it. If you've never done that before, that's how you do it. Very easy. And I'm just going to adhere it flat right here. Okay, last thing is to put some gems. And I actually took the 2021-2023 in color jewels, and I know that it's not it's not an exact match. I think I can't remember which color that was supposed to be. I can't remember off the top of my head, but I think it picks up a lot of the colors in this DSP, and I think it worked out really well. I'm just going to pick, take your pick tool. Okay. So let's put a couple down here. And one more up here. And that is the card today. I think it's really pretty. I love this Zinnia set. I love it more than I thought I would. And it's just been so gorgeous. So I hope that inspires you. Um, like I said, this, this particular layout, I think I can reuse it over and over again for all kinds of different DSPs. Look at what you can do. Look at your stash, see what you can do with it. Um, I'm going to be reusing this one, I think, um, for other projects. So it was just so easy to use. I was on a, on a, on a uh, roll this week. So have fun with that. Have a great week and I'll see you next week. Thanks for joining me. Bye.